success of a company after the Industrial Revolution has been about how many products they can get to market and get people to purchase. A lot of that had to do with internally working on performance of the company. Uh, margins on costs and profitability were continuously tweaked to optimize those returns and the, the cost of actually creating goods. Productivity and process improvements squeezed the organization to higher performance levels. Customers could easily change vendors for products who offered the best quality or price at any given time. So that was the kind of the competitive model of the landscape then. After the technological revolution, customer selection and products and thus kind of purchasing trends are not shifted so easily. The goal has shifted in the companies from optimizing a standalone product to attracting and retaining customers by offering products and services which all work together. So building an ecosystem of complementary products, not only to lure the customers in, but to entice them to stay and buy more products and support and build their ecosystem. Though tweaking the margins and squeezing performance have really stayed as part of the manufacturing process, uh, what keeps customers coming back is more what they get long term. In many cases, costs are cut on the initial system to start the customers into this ecosystem. Supporting products then add value to the ecosystem and are not just standalone, they add value and add features and capabilities to the initial product purchased that they use to already get them in the ecosystem. So controls on product lines become more important because they are enforcing customer use patterns on distributed products, products out there are already in customer hands. And this type of a business model, especially in automated and electronic components, relies on a cybersecurity base. In automated electronic components relies on cybersecurity. We'll look at two very different management models and kind of contrast them. Um, one, a product and consumer driven, kind of the post industrial revolution model. And secondly, a cybersecurity controlled management model. On the product driven, they use standardized components and open source. So this is really pushed by a lot of the open adaptability standards. On the cybersecurity control side, you look at more of a trusted component application base, making an ecosystem that relies on knowing who you bring on board. On a product consumer base, and a lot of times the open source platforms, the PC platforms, the Android platforms, they get a rapid growth and adoption by the customer base. Very quickly, lots of people were able to make applications and support them and support the whole ecosystem. On more of a, a security controlled side, you have a slower adoption, kind of like the Apple computer you saw uh, took a long time to kind of build up their clientele and their market base because they were more selective of their control of their environment from the beginning of the, their industry. On the product consumer side, you see a lot of really quick adoption of cutting edge innovation from really anonymous people out there. Any developer can make an application. Any manufacturer can make supporting equipment that all works in the ecosystem. On the more cybersecurity controlled side, you have the cutting edge quality, but it takes longer to build because you're more selective of who you let into the ecosystem and who you let work with your products. Both of them reduce cost on the entry product. They all have learned that to adapt in this post-technological revolution means getting customers on board. But on the, the first product, you know, consumer-driven side, you really have an uncontrollable vendor base. You don't know who is making applications, who is making accessories that work with it, and that's the nature of that business. You don't want to. You want everybody to be able to, to really spur the growth in that industry and that product base. On the cybersecurity controlled side, you have a manageable vendor base. You only let application developers and electronic makers that you want to work with and you have, have verified their quality and their capabilities play in this ecosystem. For market and pricing controlled, the product consumer different side it doesn't have control over how many vendors are out there, what they're producing, has a very difficult time controlling 
uh, the prices and keeping them from becoming saturated and over uh, more products than, than will sell in certain areas, which cause price pricing uh, saturation and prices to go down. Uh, on the cybersecurity controlled uh, system and ecosystem, because you have all the vendors um, manageable, now you can start to say, I can control the numbers out there and keep them from saturating the market and then keep my pricing to a level that I desire it to be. It's about control here. On the product consumer driven side, the open source, the often open bill of materials, anybody can build, can know what's in there. And supply chains, um, what happens is you get counterfeits that start sneaking into the supply chain of people who learn the bill of materials, extract the firmware, and boom, they can produce an exact duplicate without the research and development overhead that the initial company that makes the product ecosystem started it has put together. On the cybersecurity control side, uh, the market size and consumer trends are traceable. So you can see where all your, your supply is coming in because now you have management and you know who the people to go talk to and say, what supply are you using and where is it coming from? On the consumer driven side, the market size, players, and sales, all this are unknown to the ecosystem as a whole. And to, there's really no one controlling it, just letting it grow and develop to, bolster the mar to, to bolster the market and have everything grow as fast as possible. What happens on that product consumer driven side is the parent company has a lack of control on the ecosystem, which leads to warranty and support costs on them for counterfeit products or for other ecosystem products that they did not produce and don't have control over and a lot of times don't even know how they infiltrated into the whole ecosystem. On the cybersecurity control side, you have enforcement of use patterns for the whole ecosystem, end-to-end -end users. You can optimize your support and supply to, to find the best prices because you have control over it. What it basically ends up leading to is on a product consumer driven side, you end up with a low quality perception by end users. Not because your, the products of the parent company aren't good, but because there's so many different representatives and different faces to each product and different supports and non-supported products and fast products to market and different quality of different products. And it's all just uncontrolled as part of the market to grow fast. You don't try to control those type of things. Come over to the other side. What you have is similar to what an Apple computer has done with their life cycle, their products. They have a high quality and a perception in those end users because they are able to, to maintain across their ecosystem all the various pieces of it to maintain a quality standard that they are uh, happy with.